Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday, 7.15 a.m. here on the East Coast. Prices of BTC currently at 94.44. Um, okay, folks, so I wanna show you guys a couple things of how I go about my thought process of looking at trades, how I look at setups, and how my analysis that I provide for my community helps us better gauge how we're going to go about a trade. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna show you this chart right here. All right, notice how right here we had a buy zone right there. Um, I had a stop somewhere, actually, my stop was over here, okay? And today I'm gonna to show you two losses that I took uh, based on the trades, but the trade worked out perfectly, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I, I wanna show this to you because it's important to understand that placing stops in a particular area Okay, it helps you define risk, um, and unfortunately, uh, you know these trades do work out, but they work out without you. Okay, that's just the fact of trading. And sometimes, you know, my community members will get lucky because their risk tolerance might be a little bit deeper than mine. They may not set stops as tight as mine. Okay, so they actually fortunately got very lucky in um, two trades. All right, so let me show you real quick. All right, so the first trade was this one right here. Okay, so I was scalping a short. You could see price was breaching this parabola right here, okay? So I said that I'm gonna get into a short right there, um, and my stop was 9,500, and then my stop got hit. Okay, so let me show you that same chart. Look, we were right there. We were breaching that parabola, right? And then I actually averaged in around uh, 9,470, but look over here, this candle wick, I'm gonna pull this in closer so you can see. This candle wick went to a high of 95.11. So just $11 higher than mine. But it stopped me out and then took down, um, you know, went, went to the uh, direction that I wanted to go, okay? Unfortunate, but again, I was right on the technicals. How did I know that was going to happen? Well, first of all, no one really knows um, that things are going to move up or down. We just have possibilities and probabilities that we could understand, okay? But I'll tell you, you know, in a layman's explanation how I did, you know, quote unquote, know that was going to happen, right? So when this price came down like this, right, the first, you know, sort of big uh, movement back down and before we shot back up to this range that was established was this key low right here, okay? That's around $9,300 and that's this black marker right there, as you can see going sideways, okay? Then I saw that, okay, this was the first lower high that was established from over here and over here, right? So I'm gonna draw a line across and see if that meets the other price action. And lo and behold, it does, right? You can see first touch right there, second touch, bit of a deviation right there, third touch, a bit more of a deviation right there, fourth touch right there, multiple touches, deviation. All right, so I knew for the most part, and by the way, this all this had not happened you know, obviously over here, right? So I knew for the most part that price was going to stay between this range and this range, okay? And so when price came up to the upper bound of this area, this trading range right here, I said, you know what, I'm gonna short this, okay? But my stop is going to be a little bit tighter. I should have actually placed the stop, you know, up here, right? But I was actually driving and unfortunately I didn't get the opportunity to do that, so the trade, went up, um, took out my uh, took out my stop, and then pushed back down, okay? So again, the target played out perfectly, right? Because our targets were down here. And then the second trade, okay, I'm gonna show you the unfortunate thing about trading. Um, here's my second trade, okay? So even in my second trade, you can see right there, right? Price is up there, and it was looking to come down, okay? So I said, as you can see, price hit the buy zone perfectly, right? With this movement down, okay, with this movement down, I said, I'm gonna buy here. How did I know that was going to happen again? So after my short, I said, okay, I think the bears are strong enough to push this thing down, but I don't think they're going to break this trading range, this trading range right here, so easily on the first go, okay? So what they're gonna do is grab some liquidity. All right, so the liquidity, where does it stand? It stands where this green box is. How do I know that? 
look at the reaction from every time this green box has been tapped. Touches here, takes off. Touches deeper in here, boom, takes off. Right? So I knew for the most part there was still more juice left in the bulls down here. And I said that, okay, where is my stop going to be? Well, my stop is going to be where there's a previous low put in and before this price action happens. So I look to the left and I say, all right, well, this is the last hammer that I see. This is a hammer candle. And you know this helped, this area right here, helped propel the price all the way all the way up here, okay? So I said, all right, I'm gonna place my stop just beneath that. But unfortunately, what the bulls needed was more liquidity, so they reached an even deeper down here, okay? So what this tells me is, the bulls actually weren't strong enough here, okay? Um, but they were stronger down here. So when the bears pressured this, uh, the price even deeper, it helped propel this price back up to this TP1, the target profit one, all right? So we're back at it here, okay? So I think what's going to happen is, and again, my target profit two marker even almost got hit. I think we missed it by like $6 or so, or $5 actually, you know? So again, it, it's unfortunate, but if you are watching this market overnight, you knew uh, what to look out for. You had a game plan set out. Okay. This is something that I provide for my community every day. Now, it's unfortunate that these both these trades worked out without me, but at least you knew that what to look out for. If your risk tolerance was a bit better than mine, your stop would have been down here, which was um, the uh, lower than this wick low right here. Okay. And even then, I mean, you'd still have a pretty good R. Like if we map that out, right? So if you got into this area right here, your stop is over here, and your first target is over here, that's a 1.7 R, meaning you're risking $1 to gain 1.7. That's for the first target profit, right? Second one up here, um, you're risking $1 for $2.45, okay? So both of these, we're actually pretty decent trades, okay? Pretty decent um, risk to reward setups, okay? So anyway, the reason I wanna show you guys that is because it is one of the more unfortunate things about trading. You have to get used to losses like that. And I did, I quickly moved on and I said, you know what, I'm really happy for you guys who got these trades in. Unfortunately, I got stopped out on both. Because here's the thing, my community members don't just blindly follow every little thing. They think for themselves too right? Which I'm really fortunate about because I try to teach as much as I can, okay? I don't want my community members to be the sheep like most people are in the crypto space. I want them to be educated. I want them to be informed and I want them to be doing stuff like this. So they then ask me questions, hey, did I do this right? Rather than, hey, what do I do? Okay. And, you know, once you go from the questions of, hey, what do I do to, hey, did I do this right? Did I set this trade up right? You have then transcended from a person who is essentially looking for answers rather than one who creates the questions and seeks out the answers, okay? So that's one of the more important things of trading and also in life, all right? If you're, if you're one who wants to constantly learn and improve, you will, okay? If you're one who wants to constantly get signals, you won't, and you'll probably get your money taken away, all right? Okay, so anyway, I wanted to go over that. All right, so let's go to the uh, Bitcoin analysis in general, all right? So what are we seeing in price action, and what do I think is going to happen, okay? So first things first, all right? What we're seeing right now is, again, price is still moving back in this trading range, right? You can see a majority of this time of her price, I don't know why this keeps happening, uh, majority of the time, price has actually spent time in the sideways trading range, and that's between, let's just say, $9,500 and down to about $9,300. So that's a $200 range that price is just moving up and down in, okay? Now, if we go for higher time frames, okay, where are the higher time frames? Okay, there they are, all right? So here's a one-hour chart. This is a larger trading range, what we're seeing, all right? And it's actually a bit more visible like this. And the way we sort of um, map this out is, um, okay, so just like earlier, right, I stated that on the 15 minute chart, I said, where's the first low that was put in that helped propel us to create, you know, 
this trading range right here, right? So, well, first lower high helped define the trading range. Second lower high with a low, right? They're pushed back up to that same trading range. So I'm gonna look at that same way over here, right? So first, this was a candle closing right there that helped us understand that, okay, for the most part, it doesn't seem like prices are going to go up past this. And if they do, then we're going to be more bullish, all right? But again, you can't just sort of poke a candle out like this and then get rejected and push back down. That's not the definition of a clean break. A clean break is I want to see a full four hour candle closing and opening above this area right here. So when I see that, that's where I get a bit more comfortable saying that, all right, we might be interested in longs, okay? In this particular case, what I see more often is all candles are pretty much either they're opening or closing under this trading range, under this white area, all right? So now we've defined our four hour trading range, which is the high of 9,600 and a low of 9,000. So that's a $600 trading, that's a pretty wide net, right? Um, and it doesn't really help us right now, okay? But we're still, again, moving up like this, right? So this movement down here, okay? And then this movement up here, that's all deviation, okay? So what this tells me is price is still, for the most part, moving in this trading range. Ignore this and this, all right? Okay, so now that we've defined that trading range, what is price doing? Well, it's still moving sideways, all right? Okay, so let's go to a higher time frame. Let's see if that tells us something. All right, so for the most part, okay, we are still under some pivotal resistance levels, okay? How do I know that? Well, as you can see, this gold box right here, this was all support, support, support. We have not closed a daily candle and opened and closed a daily candle above this area. All right, so nothing to see here, right? And I said that the same way over here, just in a, in a, in a different fashion, okay? So you could see that this red block right here on the four hour time frame, this was really the initial point of breakdown over here on September 23rd. So what we did was, you know, once we created this lower high price, this was a last lower high before price broke down. So what that tells me is price is reaching back into that same block, right? But still getting rejected, okay? So once we close a four hour candle um, fully, right? Open and close above this red block, that tells me that, all right, we might be looking good now, okay? And this is per, as per the four hour time frame, okay? But you could see we haven't done that. Every single movement that we get into this red block right here is quickly rejected. And that red block is between ninety-seven seventy-five and ninety-six hundred dollars. Okay, so nothing special has happened other than, I guess you know, one positive is you could say that this is a low, this is a higher low, right? But it doesn't mean anything because you know this is still a high, or technically, if you really want to look at it that way, this is the high, lower high, and potentially another lower high being put in. So yes, you do have higher lows right here, one higher low, but also lower high. So we're getting something like a flag, but it's a very tight flag, okay? If we were to define that flag, it would look something like this. So you could see we're already hitting the trend line of that top um, resistance line of that flag, okay? So I really don't think that we can be bullish here, but what this gives us an opportunity for is potential shorts. Okay, so I'll be looking for shorts, you know, henceforth, all right? Because I do think for the most part, as per the four hour that I showed you, right? This 15 minute chart, uh, chart that I showed you, we're trapped under this resistance, right? Or, I'm sorry, this trading range. On the four hour chart, we are trapped under this resistance and also this trend line resistance right here, right? Remember this trend line comes in from way back here, this touch, this touch, multiple touches right there, touch, touch right there, and then you can see price hit that uh, trend line perfectly and got rejected. So multiple different ways to look at it, all telling us that we are near resistance. So even if you were, say, bullish, right, 
I mean, you can't buy here. This this would be just foolish because you're basically gambling. You're you're thinking and hoping that price has to break up. Well, price doesn't have to do anything, right? So the difference between most successful traders and most that are not is that the people who are not successful are actually um, praying and hoping on the outcome that price is going to do this or that versus the professionals are waiting for confirmation that it has shown us that it wants to do this, okay? And for the most part, my confirmation so far has been, okay, well, this resistance is clearly holding up. Re rejection right there, rejection right there. We're not even coming up to this red block um, on the third go, right? So it could be a lower high. Um, and then as per the daily chart right here, again, multiple rejections, haven't even closed a candle body anywhere close to this red block right here. This was the first, I'm sorry, the last green candle before we sold off. So this tells me that this is a bearish order block right here where there's supply just waiting. And every time you can see prices poked up in that red block, we've gotten swiftly rejected, okay? So I would say that this green candle that we're seeing right now is probably um, at least the last redemption candle. Um, or maybe we might have like one or two more before like this, and then we sell off some more, okay? And I do think that the sell off will be slow. I don't think it's gonna be fast, kind of like this right here. I think it's probably gonna be more or less like this one, this slow grind where it's like one or two weeks long, okay? Because the push up was very easy because a lot of it was just short liquidations. But the push down is going to be a grind because there's not really a whole lot of longs, I would say, that are waiting in this area. I think the longs might be waiting maybe over, um, let's see, the longs might be waiting way down here around 84, 8,500. So I think the, the bleed down to 8,400 or so or 8,250, um, that might be kind of fast, but then after that, it'll, it'll be a slow grind down, okay? Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, by the way, yes, I know people are talking about this whole thing being a cup and a handle. Um, yeah, it's possible, but it's already invalidated the, um, the characteristics of a cup and handle. I'll tell you why. Okay, so the cup and handle, the handle is only supposed to retrace about 618% of the way, all right? So you can see from this bottom of the cup to this top, right? If we're going to do that, okay? The handle has already retraced 70.5%. So it's already not the more optimal cup and handle. I mean, yes, it could still pop off, but the validation for this would be you'd actually need probably a close above, you know, this cup high right here, this candle closing. So 97.50, once you get a four hour candle closing above that, then we could say that, okay, maybe this cup and handle is active. But again, that still takes us back to this whole area where if we get a close above 97.50, right, you'd need a whole candle closing and opening above this area, this red block. And then we'd be bullish anyway, so it wouldn't even matter, right? But we haven't done that. We're still $300 away from it, okay? So let's just wait and see. You know, again, my bias still leans a bit more bearish, but it's not because I'm blindly bearish. I just posed, you know, multiple scenarios for you that are bullish and bearish, right? So you decide what you think price is going to do. And obviously my community will know when I take on trades, the kind of analysis that I'll do, and I'll let them know exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You have things to watch. You have different trading ranges to watch on different time frames. Uh, I have the Discord link in this YouTube video if you are watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you do enjoy my content. And uh, thank you so much again, folks. Have a wonderful day.